Hello creatives, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be diving in to Photoshop on the iPad and I'm going to showcase to you everything that is still missing in this program because I have gotten a few questions about specific tools and specific techniques that you all want to perform on the iPad but can't. There's a reason for that, it's because it's not there. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe and let's dive in. I have a photograph that I have taken open here in Photoshop for you guys and this one is very intricately detailed as you can very well see. Let me zoom in for you. This was a photograph I took while in Georgia. I went to Atlanta and this is the Atlanta Botanical Garden and it is so beautiful. By the way, I do have a vlog channel so if you guys have not seen that, I do have that always linked in the description for you guys and I do have this whole trip over there so if you guys want to see it, it'll be in the description down below. This also poses a really great point for tools and techniques that are missing in Photoshop on the iPad. Mind you, all of these are available on the desktop version. They're just not on the iPad yet, but they should be. So let's go over them. The whole reason I am creating this video is thanks to a lovely subscriber. Uh, her name is Perianne, um, very kindly asked um, about a certain technique that she wanted to do in Photoshop on the iPad because she specifically she told me she specifically got an iPad to edit photographs and um, she was struggling with trying to find a specific technique to use to um, repair photographs so I'm gonna go over that today as well as a few other things so let's start with that when it comes to photographs there sometimes is things in photographs that we don't want and we want to be able to repair the photo. For instance, right here, there's a leaf right here and it's kind of distracting a little bit. So I want to take this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the selection. And by the way, the only way to make a selection in Photoshop on the iPad is this tool over here. This is the selector tool. Uh, it's the third tool over here on the left toolbar. That is the only way to make a selection. In the desktop version, they have the magic wand tool, which is so much faster and so much more intuitive. This one, you do have to very specifically draw around, which for the iPad works pretty well. However, sometimes you just want to tap and select something and you can't. They are missing that in this program as far as just <laughs> ease of access, really. And they also don't have auto select layers and auto select selections. I feel like they kind of need that. What do you guys think? So I have the selection and a sub menu pops up right here. So you can refine the edge, you can erase, you can mask it, you can just deselect, you can invert, you can do these things. There's also more if you tap on more. You can transform the selection or select similar. But the issue that Perianne had was that she wanted to fill the area. But with the iPad, you can only fill the area with a color. You can't really fill the area with anything that has to do with the image around. You can do this in the full desktop version. It's called Content Aware Fill. I'm going to showcase it here. It's a very simple process. You just make your selection either with your freehand selector tool or with the magic wand tool, which is there. And you can then go to edit, go to content aware fill, and you can make your selections to fill the area and make it look as believable as possible to where the thing that was there that you don't want in the photograph was never there to begin with because you expertly filled it with the surrounding content. It's a very handy technique. On the iPad though, the only way to accomplish this, and it's not foolproof, the only way to accomplish this is to select this healing brush tool. Now there's a spot healing brush and then there's a healing brush. I'm going to use the spot healing brush and I'm going to spot heal this area. Now this works pretty well but it only works on small areas. So if you wanted to do this on a 
bigger selection, let me do this like this. If you want to work this on a bigger selection, let's say if we didn't want the water coming out of her hand, like so, and you chose a bigger selection, and then you tried to do this, it kind of doesn't work. And it doesn't work because it's only pulling from the nearest surrounding area. So as you can see here, this filled it with what is right here. And it doesn't necessarily always work. So with Content Aware Fill on the desktop version, you do get a lot more usability out of that and you do get a lot more um, intuitive selections out of that. Plus you can reselect your area of where you're pulling the content from. So I feel like this is much needed in this program. However, it is not there. I'm gonna undo that and deselect. So you can get away with this technique in Photoshop on the iPad, but only in small areas. So it may take you twice as long. Besides the content aware fill missing, there's also a lot of other effects that are missing. If you notice here under the properties panel, the only thing that you have as far as adjustments for photos is blend modes. There's no effects, there's no smart filters, none of that. There's also no photo adjustments for tone or color or balance or saturation or any of those things. There's not even levels in here. Now, when it comes to the adjustments, like for tonal ranges and color and such like that, in the desktop version, you do have a whole selection available to you for like hue, saturation, exposure, gamma correction, uh, levels of lightness and darkness, and there's also different color tonal ranges that you can do. That way you can like get the sepia tone if you wish to, or if you want just a black and, or if you just want like a black and white or gray scale and everything like that. Well, on here, you really don't have that option available. You can, well, I could say you kind of can get there, but not really. Uh, let me show you. If you go into the layers panel, tap on the panel, you can duplicate it. And then you can go into your properties panel and you can change the blend mode. So, um, for instance, multiply is going to be the most dramatic. You can also change the opacity of this layer as well to kind of get where you want. But it's not the same. Like color dodge is probably going to be something that's going to be really helpful without with. So you can kind of get there a little bit with the blending modes and duplicating the layer but it's not the same. I'm not entirely sure why uh, they're missing here because Photoshop is a photo app. Those things kind of need to be here. Like arguably, yeah, you do have Lightroom, but again, this is the iPad. And you kind of want to work seamlessly away from the office. You can't really do that when you need to make tonal and lighting adjustments and color adjustments to your photographs because it's not there. Now, I will say that they are going to be coming out with auto select and they are going to be coming out with the magic wand tool. When? I don't know. But they did say that that's on their docket to come out with. There's also grids and guides and smart objects that are going to come out soon as well. So I'm hoping that those all come out really soon. I'm, I'm, I mean like before next year. That would be, that would be handy. The other thing that is missing here, if you tap on the fill, and the stroke colors over here on the left toolbar. Yes, they do have the different color variations as far as um, what you can choose for your color models between like HSB, RGB, and CMYK. And they also have hex codes as well. By the way, if you guys haven't seen my hex color theory technical video, I will have it linked as well where I literally went through everything about hex color codes, basically where they came from, what they are, and how useful they can be. It's a very technical video. If you really want to see that, it's right there for you too. And they do have saturation and brightness within the color tab over here. However, they don't have it for the full photograph. Let's bring that for the photograph. Uh, the only other thing for the fill and the stroke colors over here, you may have noticed there's no swatches. I would really love to save my swatches. Like we do in Illustrator on the iPad. It is there, but it's not here in Photoshop. Why? I don't know. 
I believe that they mentioned at one point that they were going to bring out swatches. However, it's no longer on the list. At least not that I can see. If anyone knows different, please let me know in the comments down below. But swatches is not there. And I would really love to save my swatches instead of having to place uh, colors and then reselect using the eyedropper tool. Because when you try and reselect from the eyedropper tool, I mean, yeah, you can get there, but it's so much more taxing than just tapping on a swatch, you know? So those are the main key things that are missing in this program. Swatches, grids and guides. By the way, grids and guides was something that they said they were supposed to come out with. I mean, there's no grids and guides. There's no rulers. There is dimensions over here in the properties panel where you can see the dimensions of your canvas size, but there's, there's no rulers. Like, where are the rulers? I would really like to know. They, they have clipped adjustments, but it, it, it's, it's not the adjustments for the photograph. It, I mean, it's just making a clipping mask and then adjusting it from there with blend modes. So between the content aware fill, the swatches, the guides, and the photograph tonal and color adjustments and level adjustments, there's a lot missing here. However, there is a lot of positivity with this because you can pretty much do what you want minus those things especially their brush library has definitely extended and you can always download new ones and create your own so that's a little bit of positivity there but overall they just need more in this program so if there is anything else that you guys notice that is missing in this program leave it in the comments down below also let me know if you like these types of videos where I kind of just break down the program and tell you what's there, what's not there, so that way you're not really like beating your head against a wall trying to find how, how to do something and it just not being available. There is the full Photoshop version on the desktop, so don't forget about that. If you can't find it on the iPad, it is always going to be on the desktop version. It may be a little bit difficult to switch from one platform to the other, but Bear in mind, yes, you do want this for travel, however, sometimes because programming takes a while and releases take a while, you may have to just do it on the desktop. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe. And also, I do have a Patreon. I recently shouted it out. Um, I do have a Patreon where I am exploring my own personal style again and um, learning how to fully digitally paint and all that. So if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check it out. I do really appreciate it. And uh, thank you to Perry Ann for inspiring this video. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next video. See you soon, creatives.